Hey everybody, welcome to the Three Amigos Isolation Podcast, brought to you by Circles of Rhythm. Take it away, John. Thank you, Alan. Welcome, everybody. Hey, thanks, John. Okay, here we are. (laughs) We're doing this. That was amazing. You know... I have to give it up to Danielle because she was so pissed off cleaning up the house and taking care of the kids. And I'm like navigating, sending, getting people to send me videos and all sorts of craziness. Um, So thanks, Alan, John, for sending me those videos last minute. I don't know what it was like for you guys to bring them together. But thanks to Danielle for for also allowing me to put this together. It's fun. It took me about... uh about 25 takes because I have no time to film it and I it's kind of like doing this <laughs> so after like I think 26 takes we got it in the end so kudos to my daughter Evie for helping me out there yeah, Was I, it- I, I, I set the uh, I set my phone on the cajon and thought I'll just do it practice a bit and come up with something and I looked over at my phone and I thought, nah, that's not going to work. So I came into the kitchen and got Jackie and she came and filmed me. It was two takes. There you go. That's pretty good. Yeah. Two right. takes makes the great cut. I don't know. Hey, here's a question. Do you guys ever do a live recording? Like, do you ever do like recording in a band or anything like that? No. I, I audio record sometimes, but. Do you ever get your, your one take on in one shot? I would like to say every time, but no. <laughs> I have one memory, one memory of getting the, this, I used to play with this, in this band with this gal called Kaylee Smith, and it was the K Smith band. And uh, the one song, I got it in one try, and it was with, with uh, Josh Palmer in his studio. And it was like the best feeling ever, but it's, uh, it was a one, my claim to fame in terms of session studio drumming, uh, being able to record a song in one take it was fun i I don't have any claims to fame oh come on i think you've got many alan you just let's just get alan talking and all of a sudden he's like oh yeah this one time (laughs) i'll have a story about him on a on his sailboat where he met somebody who was famous uh a famous avocado chef in norwegian (laughs) norwegian or something like that norwegian of avocado well no (laughs) no our um some of our favorite people aren't avocado chefs they're actually avocado growers out of california there you go that's what i'm saying (laughs) (laughs) they keep their boat three down from us yeah there you go yeah cool love avocados (laughs) (laughs) oh man that's good there's a song in there if you like avocado no i think it's pina coladas if you like pina coladas yeah yeah something like that something like that well uh should we, should we uh, introduce our guest? Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we got, a, we got a treat for you tonight, guys. Oh, boy, we got a treat for you tonight. So this chap, what can, what can I say about this chap? I feel like he needs no introduction. Um, he's been a friend of ours for many, many years. Um, he's got a wealth of experience in the, uh, in the world of mental health, both uh, professionally and personally and musically. Uh, he's currently part of the Healthy Minds, Healthy Children portfolio with AHS, uh, a very, very cool, creative, colorful position that's right up his streets. And uh, he's no stranger to the Friday night uh, drum circles, too. He's been there a few times. So we're very excited to have him. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the one and only Mark Skalzinski. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, everybody yeah. rumble, rumble. Come on, is it working? Good evening. Good evening. What a nice warm welcome. Thank you. What a nice little community you guys have, are making here. It's very, very warm. It's nice. Well, thanks for being here. And, and uh, John suggested to, to have you in for our first special guest. Last week, we had our pilot episode and we had lots of special guests from the community who just joined in from a Zoom call. We're just, we were testing the software and figuring out what we're going to do. But these people showed up and, and, uh, and shared a little bit what was on their hearts in terms of what's going on with this whole COVID-19 pandemic. And, um, and then John came back to, and said, you know what, Mark would be a really good guest. He'd, he'd have a lot to say and a lot to share and lots of creative ideas. And I just think back of the time where I was working with uh, John and you and in, uh, in some of our uh, endeavors through through the hospital system and uh, it was a lot of fun and I just really appreciate um, your input and I, I'm looking forward to chatting and getting to to see what see what happens and this is very much a drummer thing isn't it when drummers get together and wing it good stuff happens. <laughs> so good for you guys it's awesome we don't wing it ever Al do we no no no, and every, everything we do is planned to the T. Like, uh, nothing's left to chance with, with, with us. What, so what are we doing next? <laughs> it's kind of like your haircut, Alan. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, it's planned. Every single stroke of the brush is just Oh, perfect. I know, I know. <clears throat> so, so we know Mark. We know Mark very well, but... For a lot of our viewers uh, who don't know Mark, Mark, why don't you, uh, who is Mark Skarzynski? I mean, I mean, we, you could write a book, but uh, give us a brief, a brief introduction to uh, who is Mark? Phew. Start with a small <laughs> question. Um, well, I grew up in the West and um, went to the beautiful province of Quebec uh, once I had graduated from uh, school here and uh, took me a couple of years to graduate but I did and uh, spent about 10 years in Quebec and what a wonderful amazing province um, I only came back because it felt like it wasn't fair to take a French speaking job teaching French as an anglophone in Quebec it just there's something not right about that so I came back, but I, I really did learn to love Quebec and the music. I don't know if uh, Julien and Alan, if you've been there during the summer festivals, but the music in Quebec was absolutely stunning. Um, and um, so after extracting myself after 10 years in Quebec, I, I came back to Alberta and um, I thought things would calmly fall into place. And instead, um, I, I met a wonderful woman in a bookstore and that uh, took up another 10 years. And this time we went more in the direction of BC, started a family and uh, started in the Slocan Valley, another kind of interesting musical hotspot. Uh, and my, my career at that time was teaching French um, and I had a lot of passion to offer from having lived French in Quebec and I was trying to bring it back to the West and to young people in a different way. Um, unfortunately French is sometimes the first thing on the cutting block for schools and so I kept having to jump as, as different governments cut their French programs so it created a lot of uh, diversity for me of experience. I, I had to learn a bit of Spanish too at one point to reinvent myself as a Spanish teacher and then to reinvent myself as a, an ESL teacher. And um, finally, I kind of thought, look, what I really, really enjoy is connecting with people, connecting with young people. And so, I went back to university, did a, did a master's degree in educational psychology and headed more into the mental health uh, guidance counselor stream. 
And that's what brought me back to Alberta eventually and uh, worked in various schools here. Uh, and then finally ended up in, um, in the health region and working with young people. And that's where I've landed again. So that's kind of what I've been doing from a broad perspective. I think the theme we're talking about a lot though is music. And uh, like, like maybe all of us, I had some chance exposures to it when I was young that really shaped things and um, just kept going at it. I, I'm not a fast learner, but I've just kept plugging away at it. Uh, currently, I'm, I'm really fascinated by flamenco guitar, uh, which is quite complex. Um, hard to figure out the rhythms and the, the patterns in it. So what I've done is uh, recently I've started to uh, take flamenco dance, which uh, has allowed me to kind of see flamenco from the inside and see flamenco for what it is, which is a form of communication between the dancers, the guitarists, and the people clapping who kind of hold down the rhythm section. And uh, so that's my current uh, musical passion. Uh, it just keeps morphing. Hey, that's, that's pretty cool. Now, Mark, thanks for sharing some of that. And I think probably there's a lot of people out there right now who are at home with their young ones, right? With their kids. And, uh, and I like what you said, you know, I, I found out that my passion was to connect with people, right? And, um, and, you know, you found playful ways. So it sounds like music was one of those ways, but also now movement and dance and things like that. So I don't know if I have a specific question for you, but as we move on through today's podcast, let's all also maybe throw out some ideas for people who are, who have maybe young kids or young families at home kind of stuck in this, this sense of isolation. Like how can we stay engaged as a, as a group? And, and maybe even with, you know, different age groups, like young, young adolescents or adolescent children, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, that's, that's a tough, tough time I can imagine. And, and, you know, how maybe there's an increase in, in mental health and, and maybe following all of this. So I, I, I would love for us to kind of maybe touch on all of these things uh, in today's conversation so that people have something to take away from. Cause I love that you have this, this pl plethora of, of experience and, and background and, and I'm excited to, to hear what's going on. Well, uh, can I ask Mark a question here? Sure. Yeah. Mark, do, do, do other members in your family, like what's their background in music? Uh, well, my wife is a singer. So uh, she was, yeah. Uh, when I first met her, she had just finished recording with Gabrielle Roth in New York. And, uh, and actually, magically, the reason why she stepped into that bookstore was that her music was playing. And she oh, wow. was the first and only time it ever happened. So she stepped in off of uh, 17th Avenue uh, and uh, heard her music. And uh, I was waiting for a friend who was late and um what was the question al <laughs> <laughs> well i remember the question but i'm enjoying the story my 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 question was anybody else in your family like what's their connection to music so she was fully singing at that time but and, but hey mark yeah I, I was liking the story you were telling yes <laughs> so so that's how so you met you met through music kind of that's exactly right. Music. Yeah, and yeah it, was, it was quite, and, uh, in, and in those days, uh, Willow was also leading dancing and with live drumming. And she had groups of, you know, 200 people, Willow Brock, and she was teaching a form of uh, Gabrielle Roth's work, which is kind of shamanic dance. Oh, wow. And, uh, and, her uh, eldest daughter, who's my stepdaughter, but I've been with her since basically age four, uh, Scout, is um, also a drummer and a very good drummer. And, uh, and my youngest daughter, Sophie, is, uh, is a singer as well. So lots of music in the family. 
Well, I, I wish we could get Scout to drum with us sometimes. Yeah, I'll work on that. Yeah. Well, I think I, I think I encourage her, but she doesn't, she's never joined us. Yeah, she's, she's a bit of a, a bit more of a, an introvert. Once you get her out, it's one thing, but a bit more of an introvert. Yeah. yeah she's a wonderful person. But, you know, I was thinking about this conversation um, for the past few days and kind of thinking which points I'd like to bring forward. And one of the things I thought was um, there's a wonderful recording on YouTube of a, a fellow playing mando cello. And he's, he's kind of a, just a really interesting character with a monstrous musical ability. And if you, um, I'll find the name before the end of the show. Anyway, he, he tells the story that a um, hundred years ago, we were all sitting on our porches with our musical instruments. And we all knew how to play something. And the mando cello was part of that. And a lot of our time was, was spent, you know, communing together and, and getting together and exploring songs. And this is such a wonderful thing uh, to explore in life. And I, and I think it could be a real hidden gift of this time right now um, that people could start to, if, if the, you've ever had a curiosity about a musical instrument, now's the time to try and maybe manifest one. I know Long and McQuaid is, is still open, uh, was a few days ago anyway, and just start to explore it. There's never been a better moment to learn a musical instrument. You can look up almost anything on YouTube. And I think musical instruments, there's something about the, the kinesthetics of it. You're touching it and you're, engaging with it and it's resonating and it's just a wonderful emotional you know tool and outlet and mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of inspiration so I, I would really encourage anybody who's ever had a curiosity about any instrument and maybe disqualified themselves in any way to don't disqualify yourself but just just go out and give yourself a starting point and um, find something you love in that musical expression of that instrument and head towards it. Uh, and the love of that thing will pull you kind of emotionally towards it. And, and like I said, there's, it's never been a better time to learn. There's so many things available to us now on YouTube, on the internet. So my question for you, Mark, but you've just already kind of answered it. So thank you. Was um, what would you say to someone who who is thinking about renewing a, a musical interest or hobby? But as you know, in 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 the world of mental health and with all our professional roles, and um, it's it's difficult for a person, especially now in self isolation and and not having that social. Uh, connection um, with people. What would you say to someone who who has those negative thoughts or that negative self doubt? You know, I can't do this because they don't have those people around them to say you can, you can do it. Even even us. Um, and I'll, I'll bring it back to our Friday night. I mean, there's been times where I've said to Julian, I don't think I can do the next five minutes, and I need a I need a pat on the back and, and Julian and, and Alan has been the same, but what would you say to someone who, who is having those thoughts of, I just can't do it. Therefore I won't Like, What would you, what would you say to that? Well, I think that, um, mental wellness and mental health, um, one of the things about, um, when we become very anxious or stressed or stuck, one of the things in common is that we become isolated and we become often uh, stuck to a thought, you know, or a series of negative thoughts. And we become kind of stuck in the mental realm of things. And the wonderful thing about music is gets you moving, and it gets the emotions moving. Uh, I think all of us, you know, we've, we've 
all reported to drum circle at the hospital at times and we were carrying things and thinking, how am I gonna do this? But that's the beauty of the drum, right? Is, is that it, it gets things moving and you find your place and you, you come out of it with more energy. So I guess the first thing I would say is uh, that musical instruments uh, can get many of our emotions flowing and moving and that's a step towards uh, our own mental wellness. Um, I think that part of the challenge is we all have some kind of thought or experience maybe about you're not a singer or you can't sing or you know you you, you don't have rhythm or um, and these are just things that people have said along the way that we've 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 picked up and carried along with us and i would really encourage us all to put those down um i think i think all humans can really sing i think they really can it's more about breathing uh, from what i've learned about music is, is once you start having a very simple breathing lesson, which again, you could find very easily on the internet or from a good music teacher. Once you start breathing, you start finding, hey, I have a voice, I can, I can actually sing. Uh, the same thing with, with you know, guitar or instruments. I've heard people say there's something wrong with their hands or there's something wrong with their rhythm. Or, and usually it's just finding a door in. So I would really encourage people to explore different doors into music. And maybe we can all talk about that. What are the doors into music? Um, I know that one of them is, is for me, is, is finding kind of like an emotional uh, center to it, something that you love and head towards that. That's been really powerful for me you know, uh, to go towards a song or a rhythm or a chunk of a song that really moves you. Um, sometimes it's about communing with others, just trying to figure out how can I communicate and, and, and share something with somebody else. Um, sometimes it's just the, the actual attraction to the sound of an instrument, where it sits in the register of things. What do you guys think? What, what are the doors into to starting to, to take those steps into music? I love that question, um, Mark. And um, that's, that's exactly what we need. That's the carrot. You know, people need a carrot at the end of the stick and, you know, a, a door or a payoff, you know, and, and you can, and when I'm listening to you talk about, you know, mental wellness and, you know, and, and breaking it down and telling talking about the the emotional benefits and like that that physical feeling and 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 uh releasing emotion through vibration through a guitar strumming a guitar or, or hitting a drum or playing the ditch i get that but then when i think of my kids and especially my son he's eight now and and if he's not successful at doing something right away he's like done. He's just, he doesn't really have the motivation to keep going. You know what I mean? And so we need that carrot and we need that, that what you said, finding the door into music or finding the door into whatever activity that might be, it might not be music. It could be, it could be art. It could be jogging. It could be exercising, whatever it is, eating healthy. And so for me, and, and I'd love to hear Johnny and, and Alan's uh, doors into music, but for me, my door into music was exactly that. It was, it was finding my voice, essentially, right? It was, um, it was an opportunity for me to find my voice without words, because that was uh, really, you know, drumming came to me in my life when it was in a high period of, a period of high stress and high, you know, low, low self-worth and and uh low self-confidence and uh just a, a kind of a poor you, julian it's hard to imagine you with low self-confidence <laughs> watch you, you know, leading a drum circle and you seem really loose and flowing and you know free so how did you get there it it's tra it's transformational man as we as you know you know music is transformational and and i think you know my teacher and and the, the 
Judy Atkinson, who's taught us how to do this whole community, integrated community drum circle. She, she says this all the time, you know, the drum circle is a transformational tool. And I would back it up. I would say music is a transformational tool, communicating with others through music, you know, that co-creation. So that was my, that was my door into music is finding that, that, alternative voice or that voice um that was outside of myself anyone else want to pick that one up well I, if i may i was i like the metaphor mark of, of a door i think i think we all have many doors that open to many different experiences and unfortunately with music many of us keep those doors closed and and i think the question i'd like to ask and it's not necessarily asking you or the group but just uh, rhetorically ask, why do we keep our doors closed? Why, why is it so hard to open that door into music? I sometimes ask a question um, in some of our groups, um, a, a warm-up question, for example, what, what's, what's your fantasy instrument? What's an instrument that you would love to play? And when we go around and answer this question, so many people say, oh, I've always wanted to play this instrument, but do you play an instrument? No, no, I don't play an instrument. And by and large, that's, what, that's, you know, that's the answer. I've, I've always wanted to play this. So we all have that door because there's always something we want to do. And uh, you know, how do we open that door? Or how do we allow someone to help us open the door? I think my dad was my door into music. I, I grew up as a... Um, as a as a child of a musician and um he was a country singer and they would play at the every every night from the from as young as i can remember he and his band members would be practicing in our house and um it just seemed like that that's just what everybody should do is play an instrument but as as firmly as my dad held the door open for me i often refused to go through and 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 I think what I wonder is if we take enough time considering um, what is it about us, the individual, that th that's the barrier to walking through that door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I like I love that question. I think for me, um, I'm here in the emotional connection, the learning, kind of the, the, the carrot, finding the voice. For me, it was, it's, it's always been a chance to, like, like another challenge. Like I came from a, a family of a, a rugby family, strong rugby family, um, um, who, who, who thrived on success. And, and uh, that was kind of, um, installed into me from a young age and I am still very competitive but that was in a group setting but soon as um, it came to anything you know just on my own that was that was my challenge I, I couldn't really do anything on my own so the thought of a challenge challenging myself and pushing myself and then with maturity uh, over time I then was able to as you say Alan open that door um, and really push myself and, and, and evolve, not just as someone who can play a musical instrument, but evolve as a person uh, to better myself as a, as a father, as a husband, as a member of the community. Um, but I, I, I had my, my, my granddad was a, was, a, was a huge, huge guitar player. He did the whole, he was in a band and, um, you know, he's not around anymore. Um, and he's never really got to got to see me play my my six string. It would have been really cool to connect with him. But that, that guitar, he left his guitar, and that guitar stared at me for many many years. It was in the house, and I always thought to myself, I really want to learn how to play guitar. But again, when I asked that question to you earlier on, Mark, about self doubt and the negative thoughts, I was one of those people. I mm. I was I was good at one thing. Well, I thought I was okay at rugby. But that, for me, that was it. There was nothing else. There was nothing else. And um, it took a lot of time because um, there's 
there's that emotional connection to that guitar sat there with my granddad's his big shoes to fill right so um but one day that that vest came off and and the challenge was accepted and and you evolve and then as soon as you take that leap that leap of faith and believe in yourself that's where that's where the magic happens and again we'll bring it back to a friday night we see it every single friday night and we say i think we said it last week when people push themselves and we show them a different pattern show them a different rhythm and and they evolve in the space of an hour and we really challenge ourselves people thrive when there's a challenge so for me the challenge of evolving into a into a better person into a better husband a father that's and still is the challenge for me uh, Can I, sorry i just had a thought john just just with your comment about friday night you guys and 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 people you know when you go to a rock concert or or a music festival how often do you see yourself on that stage as one of the musicians as as the drummer or somebody playing one of those unique instruments i mean or, or are you happy just watching the music <laughs> just listening but my, my point is this friday night i think well maybe i'm just projecting here but i think that everybody who goes to a rock concert imagines themselves on stage as the drummer or or another musician and what the, i think what makes a friday night so successful is that the, friday night is opens the door for hundreds of people every friday night to to actually be on the stage in some respect they become a musician they become a performer in public i mean in many people who come many people who drum friday and and in any drum circle whether it's the at the hospitals their doors have been closed sticking with that metaphor musically perhaps their whole life but the drum circle affords them or offer, offers them an opportunity to actually step through the door and perform um, and, and sometimes quite impressively. Absolutely. People come in and they're like, they, they maybe, I, my favorite is when people come in and you can tell the family's coming in and there's the dad and the mom and, you know, some kids and there's the one that's just not really into it, but they're yeah. there because they have no choice. <laughs> And they're going and they sit down and they pick a drum and they have a seat and in the large circle and usually they sit in the third row or they, you know, whatever. But then eventually they just pick up the sticks or they, they hit, start hitting the drum. And then as, as time goes on, as the, the musical progression comes in and as like what Mark was describing, that, that symbiotic relationship between sound, vibration, emotional connection, and just that physical sensation that happens um they they lose touch of that door that door no longer exists it's like poof it's it's gone and they want to be part of that rock band like I, I totally agree with you alan it's not just you anytime i go to a concert i'm like i just want to kick that drummer off the stage and i want to oh, go yeah. and i want to go and play but it depends if they're really really good obviously i just want to be in awe but but if they if i feel like i could do a similar or better job that's my ego talking but i want to go on there i want to i want to get out there but i but i love that i i love that you brought that metaphor of of the friday night being kind of a, an opportunity for people to to walk through that door for me to remove that door what i've seen in time timeless times time and again the best is when there's you know a group of if we do a, a professional team building or a workplace drum circle and you've got people they didn't they didn't know they got to do this drumming thing and we walk in and okay but then by the end they're just pounding on those drums and they're having the time of their life like that's what it's all about yeah you guys are sparking so many thoughts in me i can't keep up to that <laughs> really interesting uh -oh. conversation. <laughs> i i think music is a really intimate thing right and and it's also a highly social thing and I think we all explore it a little bit at various points alone and figure out how does this voice work or how does this, how do I drum, you know? And, and that's great, like do that alone. I remember, you know, bicycling through France alone and trying to figure out, can my voice sing, you know, unchain my heart like Joe Cocker can, <laughs> right? 
And, you know, you have to shout it and you have to go for it and you have to be alone to find it. Right? Can I do that? No, I can't do that part. I'm going to keep trying. So explore those parts that you're, you know, you're shy about and keep developing those and then slowly kind of bring it into the social realm. But also you have to find the right circle. If the circle is shutting you down and it's not a friendly, you know, welcoming, listening circle, go to another circle, go to another place. Because I think music should, should have that openness and make space and, and, and have the, the give and take. I started uh, learning guitar on 4th Street in Calgary and my mother really tried to get me learning guitar. She could see I liked it. Unfortunately, the first teacher I had wanted to teach me a song. It was an American folk song about killing your wife. That's the first song he gave an 11 year old, right? Hang is down. That your, hang, is that hang down your head, Tom Dooley? So I didn't know what mental health and wellness was at that time, but I knew I didn't like that song and I didn't want to spend six weeks on it. <laughs> so I walked out of there, basically traded in the remainder of my lessons, right? So the, the, the next opportunity didn't come around again until I was 19 in university. And the guy above me played guitar and tapped his foot on the floor all night long. And so finally, I, I went up and, you know, said hi. And, and he was friendly. He was welcoming. He said, you can do this, you know. And, and, and then the other thing I would say is don't go cheap on an instrument. If you find an instrument that, you know, rent one for a few months. But don't do the thing where you buy the cheapest one. Because I, uh, it's probably the hardest to play. I agree 100%. Yeah. You're going to get discouraged because an instrument is really hard to play. So for young people, find a good instrument that if they don't take to it, you can resell at a good price. But, you know, really set the stage in a good way. And um, you were asking earlier, Julien, uh, you know, about kids that they kind of touch on something and then they move on, right? And I think there's an intensity about musical instruments that they know something intense is going on there and they're, they're a bit shy. And so I think maybe the best way is sometimes to show them that you're interested in it and really engaged in it. Mm -hmm. Give them the opportunity, but not put too much attention on them. You know, this idea of my kid's going to perform now or even just let them slowly come to it. And it, it might take them a, you know, a month, it might take them a year, it might take them five years. But eventually when they're ready to come out of their shell, you know, they'll come out, right? It's like a cocoon almost, right? Totally. When, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but my whole music room is totally broken, broken. <laughs> taken out of pieces because of some water damage from upstairs but but um before that you know we would have i'd have my kit set up and the piano and the guitar and the bass and whatever else and and i just leave it there and i just kind of no pressure you know what i mean no scheduled time okay we're gonna do it i tried to do a little bit of scheduled time in the first week of isolation when I was uh, supporting my wife when she was working night shifts and I had to kind of stay home during the day. And, and I'm like, okay, let's learn piano. And I'm like lining them up against the wall so they don't play the piano while I'm teaching them what I'm playing, like arms distance away from the keys because otherwise they're gonna, they want to play. And I'm like, okay, this is what we're going to do and teaching them the song. But, but uh, other than that though, like uh, it's been definitely hands off just letting them kind of explore and and try it out and see how they can do i would agree with you mate <clears throat> as you guys know i've got my musical instruments scattered around the house and i mean once you get over the initial like ah, ah, like as a as a father you, julian you probably can relate to that um i think now with my with my daughter evie she's genuinely interested and genuinely excited about learning um the ukulele now she's up to three three chords now on the ukulele and she's seven and um i totally agree with what you said about just giving them space because i tried I, I tried the okay let's sit down i'm going to teach you this and my my daughter completely follows me 
she's um, she's not very good at staying still, and <laughs> she's not very good at taking orders. Uh, so we tried that approach and it didn't work. But um, having a, a hands-off approach and just leaving them to it, it's it. it I do agree. It, it it does work. It does work. The other thing that that helped me a lot later um, in my musical kind of on my musical journey was um, I realized that when I was really, really uh, shy or self-conscious, if I could try to shift it to doing it for somebody else uh, and, and offering something to somebody else, to playing a song for somebody or really giving the emotion of the song, it, it kind of takes you out of how am I doing? And, and this is where group music is so amazing too. It's, it's bigger than me. And, uh, and you just keep learning and, but you're, you're giving it for someone else that, and that's also a root of mental wellness. One of the, one of the roots of mental wellness is, is we can become too focused on ourselves and our, our challenges, our difficulties. And so when we shift that and consciously, you know, have gratitude or kindness to others, giving them something, um, it enriches us and it, and it frees us too, it liberates us. That kind of all happens without knowing on, on, in the drum circle, you know what I mean? And, and maybe it kind of decreases that stage uh, intensity, whereas like you're just one performer in front of a, an audience of maybe one or an audience of a hundred doesn't matter but the friday night you're still doing it for other people right but um but it's less and i love that 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 aspect of it's that's part of the mental wellness giving back sharing a part of you a piece of you and and like you said you opened up this whole dialogue uh in terms of music as is an intimate tool there's something quite intimate about music right and so um, when you allow yourself, even just on a general, very basic way, when you're just playing a steady beat, a steady drum, you know, that's, that's an intimate sharing of yourself with others for others to hear, to be heard. And, um, you know, I think that's beautiful. That's powerful. I, I think in the drum circle as well, Julian, um, it, it's a good conversation with a whole group of people without ever having to, make yourself vulnerable by saying something that you didn't mean or saying something that doesn't make sense to other people. Um, and yet still benefiting from the musical conversation that you're having with everybody. And, and, and I think there, there are a lot of lonely people in the world. There are a lot of people that don't spend a lot of time um, talking, speaking, conversing with others and, and the drum circle or, or music in general Oh, uh, uh, again, it, it affords us that opportunity to, 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 to communicate on our own terms using the instrument as, as the voice. And it, we, we don't have to say, I'm not talking singing, I'm talking just playing the guitar and not a word is spoken or playing the drum and not a word is spoken. And yet you leave feeling as if, as if you've just spent the last hour or two hours in the best conversation with the nicest group of people. Mm -hmm. I think there's something about our culture too. Um, now, who do I mean by our culture? Um, because we're quite a diverse culture, but let me just stick with my experience growing up as a, as a kind of a, well, I do have Polish roots, which are more Latin, but the, the climate around me was, was fairly square a lot of the time, <laughs> you know, and, the, and, and, and we're, we're kind of, I don't know if it's a reflection of the climate we live in, but sometimes we're just a bit too tightly wound. And then when you travel a bit and you see, you know, more Latin cultures or African cultures, and they're just, they've been moving and dancing a lot since they were three, you know, the, the flamenco I'm learning now the clapping that I'm I'm laboriously laboriously trying to learn, I think four-year-olds probably know a good section of those patterns. So 
I think sometimes we we have to we have to uh, expose ourselves to other cultures to stretch our own out of its its cultures can get a little bit too rigid in certain areas and so I don't know if that's been your experience but that's I, it sure was helpful they say uh, les voyages forment la jeunesse you know uh, travels form your identity and and you know open up youth and i think that's musically true too to get out of your culture and go go take a tour around and see what's happening elsewhere and try to blend with it in some way what have you what are your experiences on that on those lines <clears throat> <laughs> is anybody still there or john's i think he's frozen yeah no, no, I'm, no I'm here i think we're all just um <laughs> i was i was in i was in i was enjoying yeah mark's voice kind of mesmerizing well, he almost speaks mark almost speaks musically it does it's a musical nature to his voice we're gonna start a different kind of show do you guys know about this i think alan you were telling me about this how i'm <laughs> Touching the microphone and creating interesting sounds. On oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's good for your mental wellness too, though. The the actual sounds. What what is that called? ASMR. Yeah, exactly. So there's it's 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 trying to create those shivers. Yeah. Sound yeah. right. Apparently, that has mental health benefits. Who would have known? I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it has to be a whisper. It's a whisper. Something like this. Is that better? That's giving me shivers. Is it? That's weird. I know. <laughs> I know. Did I, did I tell you the story about when I went home to the UK a couple of years, well, a few years ago, and I went into the shop and there was a djembe sat on the shelf. So I, I told you that story. Because we're just on the subject of different cultures, and mm -hmm. um, I think in the UK, um, I think the the way of life is very. I might shoot myself in the foot here. So, um, well, not just for the UK, but many cultures around the world, many countries. There's there, there's nothing outside the bubble, and they're not willing to explore other ways of life and different opportunities and probably wasn't until I came to Canada that I actually started to learn more about that learn more about music and ways of life and history and all that so you can imagine that this rugby playing Welshman comes to Calgary learns how to play the djembe, comes through a few drum circles, now is a drum circle facilitator, has his broom with, with, with confidence. And I go back to the UK and I'm, uh, I, I'm in a, a lovely town called Newquay. And for you Welsh listeners, you'll know where that is. It's a lovely beach uh, side um, on the coast. It's really, really beautiful. And I walk into a, uh, I walk into a shop and there's, uh, you know, just some touristy goods. And on the shelf is a djembe. It's like a 10-inch djembe. It's got a price tag on there and everything. And I'm like, oh, Evie, like, check it out. It's a djembe. It's like, whoa, daddy, you should play it. So without thinking, I said, yeah, I should. So, so I go over and I pick up this djembe. And I sit on the floor. And as I'm doing that, I notice that my daughter Evie has gone to another box. And there's shakers in there. <laughs> she picks up the shakers, so I'm right, like, all right. So I start, I start playing in jambe. Meanwhile, shakers. But it's amazing how many people like came in, about four or five people. Next thing, and there's about seven or eight. And the shop is tiny. It's tiny, and um, they're all just kind of watching, and you know. And then about forty-five seconds later, the shop owner comes up and says, "Hey, you can't do that." <laughs> I said, why? You can't play that in the shop. I said, well, what happened to try before you buy? But it was amazing how there was like, there was two different 
things going on. There was people that wanted to hear it and there was people that was like, that's not allowed. We don't do that here. So I think having, you know, de definitely the way you were brought up and belief system and all that comes into it too. And, um, but I just thought I'd plug that in because uh, I, could, uh, I could attest to that with coming from my, my background too. So how are we doing for time? Are you asking me? Yeah. <laughs> How long do you have left? You're you know what? what? I think, you know, I think it's, I think it's good for us to maybe start wrapping, wrapping it up. Cause we, you know, we don't want to keep going all night and we want people to listen to the end. That's the goal. I um, but uh, I don't know, like Mark, you've got a little bit of um, experience also working with adaptive communities, adaptive, like when I say adaptive people with different cognitive abilities Dif different uh, physical abilities as well. And man, I can only imagine what it's like for families who have people or children with disabilities who, or who are at home and kind of isolating and no longer doing some of that programming, no longer having the support of the, of the schools or whatever it might be. Like, what are some strategies that we can maybe give some people out there that are, that are even, even without, you know, just some, some key you know, gold nuggets that we can share with some of these people who are spending a lot more time together and maybe don't necessarily have, like, that's a high period of stress. Um, your patience is being tested even more. Even myself, my kids are just normal, regular kids. Not that, you know, there's any big difference, but, but my patience is being tested every day, you know what I mean? And I'm still working most of the time, right? So I don't know. What sort of things could you uh, share with the community? Any thoughts? Well, I know that in certain of the schools that I've worked with, I've created spaces where, where kids that are having trouble self-regulating have instruments to explore. And, and it's a place, whether it's the basement or one section of the school, where they're not going to you know, disturb everybody by doing that. And so setting the stage for that and you know, kind of giving them a bit of an open field is is one thing and then by setting the stage i think sometimes you have to you have to scaffold things a little bit so this this kid likes drums or this kid likes guitar but how does he get into that like how can you help him so if you show him or have somebody show him one scale and then you manifest some back tracks you know, and now you show him this is how magically when you put this scale against that chordal movement, it creates beautiful melodies. You just can't go wrong. Is there any apps for that kind of stuff? Or is there any kind or, of like... I mean, there's, there's, there's tons of apps, uh, jam tracks, so you can have it on your phone and you can extend it out to a speaker. Uh, there's there's tons of apps in all styles of music, from jazz to country to uh, hip hop to so you you get these backtracks. You find simple a simple scale. Um, this is the type of thing as adults we can set it up, and and if we have any you know musical inkling, we set it up and we we just kind of scaffold it for them a bit, and say this is cool. Try this and then walk away. Uh, and then watch what happens and then come back and maybe they need something more elaborate or maybe they need something simpler or maybe they need a different instrument. Um, so those are some ideas. Um, finding out what they like and helping to break it down. So if, if, you, if they say, I, I like this song uh, and you go to YouTube and the first song, the first version of it has really out of town chords. Well, that's not the one. You've got to find a simpler version, right? And so, so they can get towards something like they love. Um, I worked with, with uh, one fellow who uh, had Asperger's and wonderful young man. And he came down and he was frustrated with various subjects at various times, picked up the guitar. That's what I did with him was I just kind of helped him follow what he was interested in, set the stage a little bit. And he just took to it. 
And pretty soon he was seeing himself as a guitarist and really, and then one day he's, he's, he did a fundraiser for the Autism Society and invited other musicians and did that like in front of Eau Claire Market, like in front of everybody, it was quite amazing. You know, I asked him later, what, what was it that, you know, really helped? And he said, he said, you know, I realized that if all else fails, I could fall back on my music. <laughs> you know, I have this, this is something I, I have that I found a way into. And so music is just a wonderful uh, shapeshifter that, um, you know, can meet people in a thousand different ways. And with a little bit of help and a little bit of cha channeling, you know, listening to what, what the young person moves towards, what their style is, what needs to happen in their body, all that, you know. Um, yeah, there's a couple of ideas. I love that. That's, that's actually super helpful. And just, you know, it, it, I'm checking some of the boxes. Hey, I've done that. You know, I have a space, a place where they can go. I love the idea of, of, you know, it sounds so simple, but find out what they like and just, then just, just breaking it down so that it's simple for them. I find that, um, you know, if we want to add movement in there, but we have, there's so many resources on YouTube for like movement and, and music and things like that as well. And there's like this just dance with kids. They love that stuff, man. I love that stuff. I'm really bad at it, but you know, <laughs> and someday they come back that your kids and they, and they blow you out of the water. You know, they just, they just, Oh my gosh. You know, I, I, uh, whether, you know, that certainly happened. My, my eldest daughter, Scout, um, all of a sudden playing, like backing up, really jazzy, snare drum type, you know, music. And I just looked at her and thought, wow, where did you learn that? <laughs> like, when did that happen? You know, or one day I was uh, driving my youngest daughter, Sophie to school, she was still going to Bishop Carroll and she was learning magnificent jazz harmony from a couple of the incredible teachers there. And uh, one day I was singing the David Francie song, uh, uh, Don't Follow Me Down. It's about this beautiful folk song about basically the elder generation is saying, don't, don't follow me down into the, into the mines, right? That's not where you wanna be. Right? And there's a beautiful refrain, and I, I was really hooked on it, and I sang it to Sophie, and uh, she just dropped into a perfect harmony. And there's something amazing about harmony. It's just, it kind of splits the atom. It's just beautiful. And, and she, just, she just made me cry. It was just so beautiful that, and I, I, I couldn't imagine, like, when did you learn how to just, drop into harmony like that, you know? And so there, it takes off for them. It's amazing. I, funny you say that, Mark, because uh, <clears throat> Evie's done that a few times the last few weeks, and, and Julian's probably experienced that with his, his kids too. Um, just they surprise you. You, you, you think that, uh, you, you wonder when, you know, they're gonna take to it, and then all of a sudden it just, it hits you, and you see it, and it's so, just fills you with pride and it's so it's it's magic when you see that it's 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 great um we are actually running out of time so we i think we need to wrap this up so i'm Alan's just falling asleep <laughs> is that i don't know I, I was i had to move the camera a couple times because <laughs> i was going like <laughs> <laughs> so let's do uh I'm getting old, Julian. I'm getting old. You still look good, buddy. Gee, thanks. Still has massive biceps. I mean, those biceps, man. I dream of biceps like that. Uh, I know. That's another there's podcast. Gotta a, there's got to be a price for those that you pay. <laughs> <laughs> a price? Yeah. He pays it in iron and mountains. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah. As soon as we're off here, I got to go work out. I mean, it's, <laughs> that's the price, man that's commitment so let's wrap up so let's do a final final thoughts let's do uh 30 seconds each 
on the uh, the podcast and uh, let's do the theme of how what would you say to others watching tonight or listening um, how would you encourage them to to open that door and uh, let's start with uh, oh what are we going to start with let's start with Alan oh I knew you were going to say that it's because you're Welsh buddy come on oh dude <laughs> Well, you know what? I, I think it was Helen Keller who said this. I think it was. It might not have been. But she said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. And I think far too often we, we hide behind the excuse of, I, I can't do it. I've never done it before. I don't have the skill. And yet it's always a dream. And you talk to anybody. And most anybody I've ever talked to who doesn't play an instrument would love to play an instrument. So I think, I think you just, just, I mean, back to the opening the door, man, you gotta, you gotta walk through it. You gotta go through it. You gotta take that risk. Um, uh, another quote, don't know who said it, but whether you think, whether you think you can or you cannot, you're right. And I would rather think that I can play something and be right about it. I don't have to be good. I don't have to be great, but doing it, just brings so much pleasure, so much satisfaction. I think that was 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. All righty. That's my answer. Um, yeah, I'm going to piggyback on what Alan was saying. So I'm just going to quote some of the things we talked about. What's getting in the way of us opening the door today? What, you know, what is it about us that's the barrier of walking through the, that door? I love that, that accountability, you know, that – there's something that's going on within us that's, that's acting as a barrier from us walking through that door of, of trying something different. And then, and then the fact that um, drumming is a musical conversation. The drum circle is a musical conversation. And that vulnerability for me is, is uh, one that is so important. And yet it's, it's an invitation that is safe. Uh, that's what I love about drumming is that it's, it's not with your voice. You know, there's no words attached to it. We're not singing uh, crazy songs uh, about a dead uncle. Was it, well, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you know, so it's just, it's, um, so I think it's a, it's a safe and accessible tool. So that's mine. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, good thoughts. Um, I would say refuse the simple uh, subtext that, that may be negative or doubtful and find your way in. I think, uh, I think all humans are singers, we're drummers, and there's many beautiful instruments that have been created through time. I'm gonna push myself when it gets a little warmer and I'm gonna do a little concert from the balcony and uh, do some social distancing from the balcony. And I'm gonna try and get another guy who's two floors down, one balcony down to jam with me if I can from the balcony. I think that would be fun. Um, and, and I really, and find a safe space to do it. Find people you trust. In, in the flamenco group that I'm in, the teacher says, uh, flamenco isn't about you. This is a group thing and uh, everybody is tuned in and encouraging each other. And you don't make a mistake. We're all just, uh, you know, like Chet Atkins said, um, uh, what was the word he used? That uh, a, a mistake is harmony resolved. Dissonance, dissonance is harmony resolved. So basically he says, when you make a mistake, you just keep going forward until the mistake corrects itself. And so just, uh, just keep going in that way. And, and also look for, look for what you imagine and dream about in terms of instruments or what you remember, what made impression. There's some gold there and, and move towards that. That would be my advice. Thank you so much. Cool. I think uh, for me, everything you guys just said. <laughs> no, there was a famous, uh, there was a, a cool guy from Wales, very famous chap, and he said, uh, there are no mistakes, just learning. That was me, by the way, I just made it up. <laughs> 
I saw you writing it down. I was getting a, you were, you're trying to get, you know. I was just taking little things and, you know, what you said and just put it in a sentence. So. Well, I mean, that's how quotes are made. I know, yeah. man. I know. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for joining Thank you us. So much. It was really fun. Gave me lots of energy. Awesome. Good, and good luck, everybody out there. Thanks, hey, Mark. Let's let's give a little rumble for Mark, everybody out there that's watching still. Rumble. Thanks. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you next week on Thursday. We're doing another podcast. Hey, do we have a special guest slotted for next Thursday? I think we might have somebody. Um, maybe. No promises. Don't say anything until it's done. And then also tomorrow, I'm I'm we'll be doing on Fridays. I'm gonna throw up a little drum jam that people can join in, and I'm gonna have a, a meditation attached to it, and some special guests for meditations. Maybe Mark, if you want to lead a meditation for uh, one of these Friday night things, uh, that'd be really cool. I'm I'm putting in like a musical soundscape and and throwing over top the meditation. Um, somebody who can do some guided, so it's cool. I'm open to most anything. <laughs> Any final yeah. thoughts, guys? That's it? Yeah. That's All right. It. Say goodbye. See you later. Bye. Take care. Bye. Guys, buddy. Take See you care. later, guys. Thank okay. You. We're done.